Uh, in this video, we will be talking about the set of natural numbers. Okay. Um, in uh, 1888, Dedekind published an article in German. Uh, and um, I saw a few translations of the title of this article. Uh, the one I liked the most was What are numbers and what are they good for? Okay. Uh, so, in this article, Dedekind looked at the set of natural numbers and he defined it like so. Uh, he said uh, there is one initial number, he called it one, okay, so one is uh, a natural number and then there is a function s called the successor function, okay, uh, and, and the function s is a function defined on the set of natural numbers with values into the set of natural numbers that it's a one-to-one -one function. Okay, so these are the two starting points uh, that Dedekind looked at when he uh, defined the set of natural numbers. Okay, now uh, there's a few properties that these two starting points of the set of natural numbers um, have, and, and they are the following. So, one is not, I emphasize this, one is not the successor of any element. Of any natural number, okay. Then S has the property that S of M is equal to S of N. Then M is equal to N, no matter what two natural numbers we consider M and N. Okay. This is actually a restatement of the fact that S is a one-to-one -one function. And the third property um, that uh, um, this set of natural numbers has is the following. Uh, if A is a subset of it such that 1 is an element of A and with any natural number that could be in A then the successor of it is in A then A is the entire set of natural numbers. So these are the three properties that Dedekind was looking at. Okay, now with all this uh, out of the way, let's see what this set of natural numbers looks like. Okay, so from what we know initially, one is an element of, of n. All right, and this is the only element of, of n that we know of. Okay, but now we know rules to construct new elements uh, of n, so new numbers. Okay, actually, there's only one rule that says, okay, given any element, um, and the only one that we know so far is 1, we can look at S of 1. All right? Uh, and so, so now we can say, okay, 1 is a natural number. S of 1 is a natural number because we have this successor function. Do we get something new or are we stuck? Okay? Well, actually... Uh, property A here says 1 is not the successor of any number, so 1 is not S of 1. So S of 1 is another natural number. Okay, now we can say, okay, now we've got this rule, so how about we look at S of S of 1? Well, potentially this is another natural number. Okay, so fact is that we can keep applying S again and again and again. What are we getting? Okay, so what we saw uh, so far is that 1 is different from S of 1, okay? But maybe if we keep applying this process, maybe we get to the point, uh, you know, later on, say S of S, and so on and so forth, of S of 1, all right? Uh, so let's call this element M, right? So maybe we get to the point where we apply S again and again and again until we get to this point, all right, uh, such that when we apply S one more time, so when we look at S of M, we do not get a new element, okay? So S of M is the first element that's not new. So we got a bunch of new elements up to this point, all right? And all of a sudden, S of M is not a new element, okay? So this is the first one that's not new. To this set. Okay, so what does that mean? So 
can S of M be 1? Okay, because 1 is our starting point. Well, S of M cannot be 1 because, again, property A says that 1 is not the successor of any number. So this is not happening. All right. Uh, so can S of M be any of these other numbers in this set that we have so far? Well, all these other numbers are successors of something, okay? So if S of M shows up in here somewhere, it must be the case that there is some N in here, okay? So that S of M is equal to S of N, right? So we made sure that S of M is not the first element. So is it possible that S of M is equal to S of N. All right. Well, if we look at property B, that means that, okay, so we've got two numbers, M and N, so that S of N is equal to S of M. Well, what that means is that M is actually equal to N. So M is equal to N. Well, what does that mean now? It means that M is actually not new to the set of elements we obtained before it, okay? Because M is actually N, and N is obtained in this set before M was obtained. Well, but we just said that S of M is the first element in this construction here that's not new to the set. We obtained it before. And now we figure out that M was also obtained before. Well, clearly that's a contradiction. So what can we conclude now? We can conclude that this algorithm here does not get stuck. So we get this set 1, S of 1, S of S of 1, and so on and so forth. That's an infinite set. Okay, so this is an infinite set. So this process of actually applying S again and again and again keeps coming up with new numbers. All right? So this is a set of natural numbers. Let's call it A. So now, okay, let's try to understand what's this relationship between A and, and, and N maybe. For sure, A is a set of natural numbers, right? It's obtained by starting off with one, okay, one here, and we apply S again and again and again, so we get new natural numbers, all right? So now, well, okay, let's look at what this property C here says. Um, so one belongs to A, one, one belongs to A, that's fine, okay? And for any N in A, okay, S of n, well, no matter what n we pick in here, what, after we get n, what do we do? We look at S of n, right? So, so actually, this particular A has these two properties. So property C actually tells us that A is equal to n. All right? So, so basically, this is the set that Dedekind was looking at. All right, so this is the set of natural numbers as introduced to us by Dedekind. Now, one more thing before we finish this video. Okay, so if we keep having with us this notation S of 1, S of S of 1, S of S of S of 1, and so on and so forth, uh, it's probably very painful to work with this set. So this is why we are going to call S of 1 to be 2, S of S of 1 to be 3, S of S of S of 1 to be 4, and so on and so forth. So we do get our set 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on, which is the set of natural numbers. Okay? Uh, and in a future video, we are going to be looking at this property because it turns out that this is um, sort of very, very important for the definition of the set of natural numbers and for future development of math.